Okay, the first thing that we need to know is the pancreas structure. So how it looks like, as you can see, the pancreas is a pear shepherd gland, and in most adults, it is 6 to 10 inches long and 2 inches wide. So the pancreas is located in the curve of duodenum. So we can see the pancreatic duct in the pancreas is attached to the duodenum. Pancreas is divided into three regions. We have head regions, body regions, and tail regions. And pancreas is composed of two types of tissue. We have exocrine tissue and endocrine tissue. So this is what we call pancreas as the two-in-one organ because it has exocrine portion that secretes digestive enzymes by pancreatic duct and endocrine portion that secretes hormone straight into the blood without need to go, to go through any pancreatic duct. So what is the part in the pancreas that we need to know? So we have to know pancreatic isolates and arsenal cells. Pancreatic isolate, or we call it as isolate of Langerhans, named after the person who found it. So pancreatic isolates are scattered heavily at the tail part. It is an endocrine portion. So remember, endocrine portion are cells that produce and secrete hormones of insulin and glucagon into the bloodstream. So basically, um, they secrete hormones, okay? So by five different types of cells in the pancreatic isolate. So these are five different cells in pancreatic isolate. We have alpha cells, beta cells, delta, gamma, and epsilon cells. So alpha cells produce glucagon and make up 15 to 20 percent of total isolate cells. Delta cells produce an, a hormone named somatostatin. Beta cells produce insulin and amylin. While gamma cells produce pancreatic polypeptide and epsilon cells, which make up less than one percent of the total isolate cells, produce ghrelin. So what are the function of these hormones to us? So first, glucagon. Glucagon is the hormone that raises blood glucose level by stimulating the liver to convert its glycogen into glucose. So remember, glucagon, glucagon are secreted by the alpha cells. Insulin and amylin that secreted by the beta cells. So insulin lowers the blood glucose levels by stimulating cells to take up glucose out of the bloodstream. And amylin, it slows the gastric emptying. So it prevents us, it prevents spikes in blood glucose levels. Next, somatostatin that is secreted by the delta cells are hormone that suppresses the release of the other hormones made in the pancreas. Next, pancreatic polypeptide that is produced by the gamma cells, it regulates both the endocrine and exocrine pancreatic secretions. And the last but not least, ghrelin that produced by the epsilon cells is a protein that stimulates hunger. Next, we have arsenal cells. So arsenal cells are the exocrine cells of the pancreas that produce and transport chemicals that will exit the body through the digestive system. So the chemicals that the exocrine cells produce are called enzymes. And these enzymes will be secreted into the duodenum and will and will assist us in the digestion of food. So because arsenal cells is an exocrine tissue, so the enzymes or the substance that secreted by the arsenal cells need to be released into the darts first and then it will pass into the targeted tissues which is the duodenum, the first part of the small bowel, where the enzymes will assist in the digestion of food. So the enzymes that are released into our duodenum is the trypsin, chymotrypsin, amylase, and lipase. So I will continue to explain briefly about the function of pancreas. So pancreas have exocrine gland and endocrine gland. Exocrine gland will produce the mainly digestive enzyme and also helps in digestion. There are various functions of exocrine gland which are to lubricate, regulate body temperature, nurture newborns including lactation, aid in digestion and reproduction. So exocrine gland secret products that end up external to the body. The secretion is under the control of nerves and hormones. The first example of exocrine gland and its secreted product is lacrimal gland which secrete the tear ducts and gland near each eye. The secondly, the memory gland which secrete the breast milk. The third one is acrine sweat gland which can found in virtually all skin and will undergo perspiration. 
Lastly, salivary gland. Salivary gland will secrete the saliva consisting of flake and digestive enzymes. So next, we go to the endocrine gland. Endocrine gland is responsible for the regulation of carbohydrate metabolism such as blood sugar with its insulin and glucagon production. Endocrine gland will release hormones and responding to the nervous system as it is its function. The products that secrete by endocrine gland will move to the bloodstream. So I have two examples for endocrine gland. The first one is pineal gland. It will become active when the light that reaches into our eyes decreases at night. The second one is thyroid gland which will secrete a number of hormones that act on metabolism and can increase or decrease the rate of cellular metabolism. So, let's look into the differences between exocrine gland and endocrine gland. Exocrine gland doesn't pour its secretion into limb or blood, but endocrine do. The exocrine presents its ducts, but endocrine not. The exocrine pour its secretion directly over the target tissue, meanwhile endocrine's secretion will transport through the blood. And lastly, the secretion of exocrine is enzymatic and lubricant. However, the endocrine secretion contains hormone. How will fossils with various factors contribute to poor pancreas health? Okay, so this is various factors contributing to poor pancreas health. Okay, for the first one is alcohol consumption. For the second one is high fat diet. For the third one is overweight. For the fourth one is tobacco product, and for the last one is about our genetics. Okay, so how the factors affect the pancreas? So let's take a look at alcohol. Alcohol causes the pancreas to produce toxic substances, inflammation of the pancreas, and swelling of the blood vessel in the pancreas. Okay, how about high fat diet? This of thing brings the infiltration of inflammatory cell in the pancreas. Necrotosis in the pancreas, high fat diet can cause pancreatic cancer. So, uh, this is about overweight. It's allowing a regulated lipolysis of visceral fat and rich in unsaturated triglycerides. And it, release, it will release UFA, which inhibit mitochondrial complex. I and B causes necrosis. Okay, it will also increase acute pancreatitis. So, uh, tobacco product, smoking induce pathological and functional changes in the exoscreen pancreas. Nicotine increase damage through signal transduction pathway in pancreatic acinal cells. Cigarette decrease insulin level indicating both endocrine and exoscreen cell damage. Okay, this is about genetic and this is the last factor. Acute and chronic pancreatitis are linked to mutation of the SBINK1 gene. Hereditary pancreatitis is known to be caused by mutation of the trypsinogen. The RSS1 gene, approximately 10% of pancreatic cancer may be caused by genetic factor. So, this is from me. Thank you. Hi, I am Nuraisha Binti Makadar. We explain to you on how to maintain a healthy pancreas in daily life. The first one is, you should consume varied diet which is eat between 6 and 8 small meals throughout the day to help recover from pancreatitis. This is easier on your digestive system to function well. The second one is, eat lots of fruit and vegetable to reduce your risk of developing gallstone or high triglyceride. The next one is eating fish and white meat. Please prevent yourself from processed meat and red meat because this can increase pancreatic cancer risk. Other than that, you should consume less high fat food. Looking for low fat sources to consume in your daily meals such as, such as white fish. The next one is Please avoid yourself from consuming alcohol or soda. This will help you to cut sugar in your daily meals. Last but not least is please maintain normal cholesterol and triglyceride level to prevent your pancreas to get inflammation. Thank you.
uh, apakah uh, simptom-simptom awal yang menunjukkan uh, ayah Cik Muhajirah mengha- menghidapi penyakit pankreatitis ini? Beliau, uh, dia ada, dia adalah perokok lega. So, masa mula, kita tak perasan pun yang dia ada penyakit pankreatitis ni. Uh, angin tu stuck dekat dia punya paru, tersekat dekat paru. Uh, dan dia ada kemoborot dan dia ada rasa macam loya-loya. Uh, dan tu ingatkan ada penyakit lain lah rupanya penyakit ni. Boleh kami tahu apa punca utama yang membawa kepada penyakit ini? Okey, uh, dok- merujuk kepada doktor. Dan uh, dia ni ayah saya ni ada adalah perokok yang dia dah merokok selama 30 selama uh, 30 tahun, lebih kurang 30 tahun. Dan doktor ada mention juga pasal uh, pemakanan, pemakanan yang diet yang tidak jaga lah. Dan sebab dia punya kandungan makanan tu yang menyebabkan dan dia punya disebabkan dia merokok juga, uh, dia me- membawa kepada penyakit ini. Ha. Boleh saya tahu apa, uh, apa perawatan spesifik yang diberikan kepada uh, yang diberikan oleh doktor untuk uh, untuk rawat penyakit tersebut? Okey, uh, ayah saya dia diwat, dia diletakkan diwat sebab uh, doktor dia nak memastikan yang ayah saya ni ada betul-betul penyakit pankreatitis tu. Jadi dia orang kena buat CT scan. Dan masa cuba yang pertama, tak nampak dia punya apa yang benda yang ada dekat dia punya dalam badan tu kan. Jadi, sebab dia terlalu kotor masa tu. So jadi dia orang kena bersihkan Uh, bahagian organ-organ ke dalam ni yang saluran makanan eh saluran makanan yang sampai ke perut kan. Ah uh, dan dia orang ayah saya kena beti merokok dan kena puasa. Dan dia orang ada masukkan satu tiub ni ke dalam hidung dan dia orang tarik guna pisau gari supaya nak keluarkan bahan-bahan dalam perut tu. Dia masuk ke dalam. Uh. So lepas dia dah, dalam masa sebulan juga dia kena buat macam tu dah scan dah apa. Uh, dapat tahu yang dah buat CT scan dapat tahu yang dia ada penyakit tu. Pun saya tengok dia bagi Panadol rasanya kalau macam demam ke apa kan. Sebab ialah lama kan puasa. So, ah, dia buat tu je lah. Dan lepas dah keluar daripada hospital, baru-baru ni ada temu janji dan doktor kata kena tunggu uh, 6 bulan. Doktor tak bagi ubat tapi 6 bulan sebab nak pastikan sama ada uh, dia perlu lakukan pembedahan ataupun tak untuk buang batu hampir dua yang ada dekat dia punya organ tu. Oh. Faham? Okay, uh, untuk soalan seterusnya, uh, berapa kerap dia terima uh, rawatan daripada hospital? Uh, masa dia ada letakkan diwat adalah selama sebulan, lebih kurang sebulan dan doktor tak tak bagi ubat. Just balik lepas dah CT scan tu dia balik rumah, just doktor just pesan pasal pemakanan, uh, tak boleh berkok. Dan bila macam cakap tadi buat tunggu janji, doktor pun tak bagi ubat juga just tunggu 6 bulan uh, untuk pastikan sama ada perlu lakukan mudahan ataupun tak. 